Oh, hey, we're back with Dumpster Dive. Nomi, you're back this time. Aren't you happy I only I bring am. you back for crap? Hey, it's... We have improved. Take that for what you will. I just literally like saying, um, yes, this moldy chocolate chip cookie is better than the one that was just mold. <laughs> <laughs> So we did the thing once again with Xenosaga the Animation. He's a big fan of the games. I played the first two or three hours of episode one almost 20 years ago. In short, I barely remember anything. So we'll approach this from both sides. Is this a good anime on its own for non-fans? And will fans enjoy it? <laughs> the answer, by the way, might surprise you. Probably I not. Think, I don't think I don't think it will surprise anyone that watches you, dude. <laughs> hey, we had to balance it out a bit. I covered the wings of Hanimais and Metropolis back to back. It's like, you know, let's see how this go oh, there we go. There's some shit. Yeah, spoilers if we're jumping ahead here. This wasn't a very good adaptation. So much so that it barely stayed in print for more than a year or two from the company that held the license to it in the US. Yeah, definitely, definitely can't find the entire 12 episodes just up on YouTube. Yeah, if you want to check this out, it's it's on YouTube for free. No joke, no ads on the videos either. No, so, I remember there was a video. I think there was, was one ad episode ad. that had an ad on it, but that was, it was like one like episode ad. Five or seven, and that was a that was one ad at the beginning of the episode. Everything else, so. Well. But, this, but what I'm telling you is this anime answers one very important question. What if the first Xenosaga game was adapted and it kind of sucked? And they but I guess we should get everyone up to speed. For reasons. So for those who don't know, Xenosaga is a game series developed by Monolith and published by Scamco all the way back in 2002. Yes, this is the 20th anniversary of this game. No, we did not mean to do this. This just happened by chance, but hey... It looks better in a title of a vid. Yeah. And the series is more or less a space opera, or space epic, told over a series of games. This anime attempts to tell the 35 to 40 hour story of Xenosaga Episode 1, the first game, and 12 episodes. <laughs> and each episode's less than 20 minutes apiece, taking away the OP and ending. Yeah. It's a disaster. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but it wasn't the worst. No, I've seen far worse, but at first, at first it was it, it but it did get worse as we got near the end. Yeah, you come, you'd warn me about that. That's what I heard when I was looking at reviews or the reception of it. It's like I saw some people like, you know, it's it's okay. I'm a fan of the game, and I then other people were like, what are you talking about, man? Well, flash forward to 2005 in January, and Toei, yes, that Toei, would produce a 12-episode anime of the series, and I have to ask why? Normally you release an anime to recap for, you know, to get people prepped for the second or third game in the series, but episode 2 had already been out. I think episode 3 was well into development at this point. What was the point of only recapping the first game? Uh... Because we didn't have the budget to do the second game as well. They really should have just made this 24 apps. Probably would have been better. Oh yeah, no. I <clears throat> would have had a good time. Well, this anime came and went, and I don't think anyone in Japan gave a shit about it either when it aired. So who would have the balls to, to bring up an irrelevant anime adaptation <laughs> and release it two and a half years later after even the game series started fading from popularity? ADV. Of course, it had to be ADV. Come on, guys. They're masters at doing stupid shit. Also, I'm betting this anime they were able to pick up on the cheap when they were on their deathbed. So yeah. Probably. ADV released the first couple of volumes. Remember when those were a thing in 07? And then volume 3 in 08. Less than a year later, Funimation got the rights from them and put out their own release of the DVDs in 08 before losing the rights like two years later. 
and since then it's been out of print permanently. Even Funimation didn't want this shit. <laughs> I just realized Funimation were only to put this out on DVD and distribute this, market it and everything, but yet those fuckers let the Higurashi license expire. Piece of shit. Yeah. But remember, kids, <clears throat> don't get into anime collecting. Oh my god, this series is so stupidly expensive if you wanted to own it. It's it's really dumb. In fact, it's cheap. It's ironic if you look up the save edition from Funimation because that's the most expensive version there is. It's cheaper to get the separate volumes from ADV. It is most assuredly a good thing that there was not additional like commentary. On if uh, that's what I was looking up, I was like, oh please, no, don't don't tell me there's anything that. But no, there's not. It's just a lazy release from ADV. I think it would have been yeah. fun, though, to hear if anyone on board were fans of the games or something in the cast. But, that now that we got that out of the way, cool. I guess it's time to finally, after a year of setup, to get to the story of this. So, I think it's... Uh, we've abandoned Earth in this universe, right? Because in the anime, it wasn't very clear. Yeah, in, in the game, the opening cutscene has you on Earth in, like, the early, like... It was either the early 2000s or like the 1990s, and then, and then we just, and then, and it, it's, it, it yeah, the anime literally is, a, if I, it's like 42, 47, or 47, 42. Yeah, it's like it's, it's four, four thousand, it's, it's in the 4700s or some shit. It's millennia after current, it's a couple millennia after current day. Yeah, so we're in space, and our main character, her name is Shion, and she's an engineer working on a toaster named Cosmos. She's the smartest. Yeah. That's, she, that's Shion's thing. She's really dedicated to her work, too. Um, as far as Cosmos, though, you find out really early on, Cosmos apparently went berserk in the past and killed most of her dev team, including Shion's ex-boyfriend. What? I didn't, he was her boyfriend at the time, but he's definitely her ex now. He's dead. His name was Kevin. <laughs> you go there's a Shion, Cosmos, Kevin. I mean, the one, the one that likes her now is not much better. His name is Alan. Yeah. Speaking of which, we'll get to each character when we do, but... So that's the basic premise, is uh, they get attacked by these things called the Gnosis, which... What are they? Interdimensional aliens or something that turn yeah, you to salt when they touch you? They're inter Well, no, they're made out of salt. When if they... They can either ju they can either kill you like normal things, or if like they can like grab you and you will turn into light and disappear. But yeah, they're like made out of pure salt somehow, and yeah, they're in they're inter interdimensional beings, which is like yeah. And and they there's a the whole reason for cosmos is cosmos and a few other things can use. Something they call the Hilbert effect, which makes it so you can actually, which you means you can shoot and kill the things instead of them just not being affected by you at all. They Stupid evil interdimensional shit. alien. Yeah. Yeah, and they're all, everyone's racing to find this thing called the Zohar. It's the MacGuffin. Or Zohar, as they keep flipping back and forth in the dub. No, yeah. they, they only called it that the first time. And then they got Zohar right. It's one of those dubs, guys. Yeah, th listen, it's not the only time they did some... They did a stupid pronunciation thing. Well, well the Gnosis attack, Cosmos ends up activated again, and... They're forced to go on an adventure. There's other ships involved, warring, intergalactic political intrigue. And we're summing it up because we got to get a move on. But let's just say this does not work at a 12 episode anime adaptation. No, it doesn't. No, there is way too much going on. In fact, because of that, the back half of the anime, there's literally minutes of exposition to catch the viewer up on what's happening. 
And there, it's at the point where it's like, look, I'm not retaining all this. You just dropped like five bombshells on my head at once. And you're expecting me to remember all of it. But hey, uh, let's get to the animation. Now, Xenosaga was known for pushing the PS2 to its limits for animation and cutscenes and everything. Hell, people even complained the game had too many cutscenes. Ironically, like Metal Gear Solid. You so, certainly the animation from Toei would match up, right? No, me? I mean, as I said, the... My, what the Zohar were basically ripped out of the game, but... Eh. I, I did hear people say that, that some moments were just... They literally just copy pasted shit from the game and slapped it into well, the not, anime. Not just the animation, but like a number of the lines were just ripped straight Yeah, the, the from the script. But no, no. As I'm sure you can get where we're going with this, the animation... I don't think the animation was horrible, but it it didn't it does not compare to the effort the game. that was put into the game. No, no. Yeah, the game and is like, we gave it our A team. The the animation is uh, this is maybe our C plus. And it's Toei. You guys are the Dragon Ball team. You guys also weren't working on Dragon Ball at this time. What the fuck? <laughs> TBZ was in hibernation. So was our so was our good animator. Yeah, as far as the music goes, out. it's your typical militaristic symphony shit. I don't know, it sounds really generic to me. From what yeah, I remember of the games yeah, though, I remember liking most of it too, from what little nothing, I nothing, what nothing, I skimmed it. Nothing but yeah, nothing great about the OSC, nothing bad. It's literally that. just there. The one, the the one thing that that you br that you brought up is one song that they use for this is important is actually plot important and it's like you played it like seven times. Already. Oh yeah, so it, what is it? Is it the Nephilim song? The song of Nephilim. Yes. Yeah, the song of Nephilim. Yeah, so they keep they they like. They play the song um, when a character sings it, and they're like, oh my god, they're singing it, it's the end, blah, 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 bullshit, end times. The yeah. problem is, is that song is literally just been the normal OST they've played the entire anime up to that point. So it just feels really lazy. Though, I guess, to be fair, this is adapting the game that had one battle theme, except for the final battle. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not bitter uh, about that at all. Yo, yeah, you just recently played through it too. <laughs> oh god, yeah, the first. Well, speaking of us, silliness, <laughs> we got the dub, <laughs> and uh, the ADR director is Chris Harris. Oh yeah, you all know what that means. Look, yeah. I love Chris Harris as a voice actor. I keep having to say that because people are like, oh, you should talk all the time. Guys, I love him as a voice actor, but I'm sorry, as a director, he's kind of shit. Yeah. Make, make sure in the subtitles, you're definitely going to do this. Make sure you capitalize voice actor. He does good voices. Yeah, but... <sighs> Guys, we've covered him on Magical Warfare. He's also did another, which we haven't covered yet, but that's one. It, that's a Sentai infamous dub with its fuck up. Oh, where it's God. like, it's literally like, hey, are you okay? Yeah, I do, is more or less the response. It's like, wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> so, you've got some moments like that in this dub. You know, I'm not mad either. I find this type of shit hilarious. It's like, oh, you tried, Chris. As far as the script, it's by Lol Bartholom. I butchered the hell out of that, I'm sure. You said a lot of the lines were ripped straight from the game. Is that is that the one that I like sent you? Yeah. The the ADR okay, I'll yep. get, I can get his name. But yeah, no, the like I I think I, I I good at least half of the lines. At least when it they were at least when it was like mirroring a the other guy, an actual cutscene from the game is just like, yeah, I, I'm just to play the game. I'm like, okay, yeah, this is this, this uh, yeah, like 60% of the lines. 
Yeah, so either it's they the they were fans of the game, oh. or that was literally just dialogue in the Japanese version, too, and they just translated it. So, take either, your pick. Either way, I'm just like, yeah, at least, at least someone did research better than we get sometimes. Well, now on to the dub cast, and, uh, yeah, let's just put it this way, uh, they did not get anyone back from the games, because if you think ADV are gonna get Dave Wittenberg, Crispin Freeman, or Richard Ebcarn here, you're out of your fucking minds. <laughs> so we got our ADV regulars, but that also means we got Vic Mignogna, so it's okay. Yeah, yeah, he would... We'll get to no, him, though. Vic... Yeah, Vic... Yeah. Okay, so first, I guess let's try doing it ship by ship. We have the ship she owns a part of, the Leglende, or as they constantly keep flipping on, the Leglenda. Dobby, what is it called? Help me out here. The, the, the Waglinde. <laughs> okay, because they kept calling it the Leglenda. Glenda's <laughs> a beautiful name for a ship. <laughs> well, ships are supposed to be female. That's what I've heard. So. so that's her oh, pronoun, boy. okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Shion is played by Stephanie Whittles, who you don't know is Erna from Food Wars, or Makoto from Flying Witch, or Shino from Gate. <laughs> Shino. And, I mean, I think she does fine. Shion comes across as a dedicated scientist coon. There's more to well, a character than that, though. She really, all. yeah, she cares about her friends and stuff. And she doesn't want anyone to die. She doesn't like death. No. Well, I don't have any complaints. But I think the real star of the dub is Cosmos. Um, well, obviously. Cosmos is a, a toaster, as I said, and she has trouble understanding human emotion. And I've mentioned before, back in Metropolis, yeah, we're covering two toaster things in a row, that having to do Weird. a robot without having to, without going full on, I am robot has to be a pain in the ass, because you have to emote, but not emote too much. It's, a, it's fun balancing acting. Yep. And they got Lucy Christian to voice her, because apparently when you have a main female in a game, you need to get Lucy Christian at ADV to reprise that, or replace someone. She was Trish in Devil May Cry <laughs> the animation, by the way. Yeah. I mean, she, she does good jobs of what she does, so... She's also Uraka in My Hero Academia, and we all know Hestia is Bestia in Don Machi. You all should watch season four. Season four is fun. No, it's a good time. But yeah, she does great as Cosmos. I even saw people online say they preferred her to the uh, Japanese voice actress from the anime. So I think I thought you said it was like actual Japanese people. Saying no, that. no, 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 no. Japanese yeah, people don't would, care about our be, shit. That would be the only time I've ever seen them say that's about FMA with Vic is Ed. Oh, man, yeah, no. <laughs> but yeah, Lucy yeah, Christian is great as Cosmo. She's one of the best ones here. Next, we have... Uh, Alan. Okay, I'm not gonna lie. Why the hell is he even here? Aside to be a simp for fucking Shion. Uh, remember, he did that... He did like two things. He um, he helped like that hack hacking attempt that one time, and he did that other thing that one time. Yeah, so and Alan is kind of a blank, basic bitch. He doesn't have much of a personality except she own. No, like, I mean, for fans of the game, uh, he he gets more. He gets more in the second and third game, but... Yeah. Yeah, but on its own, we can't do that. We have to go with the anime and all presented to us. Yeah. Speaking of well, which, he's played by Blake Shepard. <laughs> Blake Shepard, <laughs> Soma from Food Wars, because we have to ship Erna with Soma, even back then, I guess. So this is where it started. And oh my god, that's you from Gilgamesh, no. <laughs> Forget what I said, Zotosaka's a 10-10. Okay, Blake Shepard, you can tell, definitely hasn't been voicing that long here. He's not terrible, but this is one where he's definitely gotten better since dubbing this. That and ADV were kind of dying at this point, so... Yeah, so Blake Shepard's mm -hmm. line saw a little off as Alan. 
not bad, just you could tell he, he got better later on. Also, it's kind of hard to bring a character to life that's just so Alan. Yeah. Next, the last member of the Laguenda, Nomi. I'll kill you. We've got Virgil. Yeah, Virgil from Devil May Cry. He made an appearance. I wish. Yeah. Okay, so he's uh, a, a, a robot racist. Oh, yeah, I should say the robots in this are called Realians, which I kept calling Realian the whole show yeah, well, after Mammalian well, from Angel Links. They have, a, they have androids like Cosmos. They have cyborgs like a guy we'll talk about in a second. And then there's Realians. Realians. are like... Which are like androids, basically, they're... They're Holly androids. Re but realians can have more, like, human... Emotions. H human personalities and emotions. That's basically the difference between them and androids, basically. Yeah, and Virgil hates realians, which... Didn't you say that fucked up thing on his face was because he did something to a realian yeah, and fucked it, one or yeah, something. In the, in the game, you find out he was in a war with realians, and in a, I guess in a fit of rage or anger, I don't know, he's, he started eating realian flesh, <laughs> and there's this whole deal, and they explain none of it in the anime. Yeah, the anime um, just has flashbacks to his war, where he's like, my friends. And what's weird is... No, no, no that's... No, uh, sorry, I... That's not Don't. even the war. The flashbacks are of his friends dying on the way to day. So they didn't even... Okay, okay, sure. I yeah. they had one flashback of the war during the Encephalon thing, but... Yeah, so Virgil's screen clear. time is heavily extended here from what you were telling me and what I saw other people say. Because he's yeah, supposed he... to die near the beginning of the game. There, like in yeah, the first act. This whole thing where, like, he... Gnosis are attacking Shion, Cosmo shoots the Gnosis, and Virgil is in the way, and then there's like, how could he do that? It's like, he w he was in the way, there was a, you know, robot thing, there was a 76% 70 chance that this would, that this was the best option, or whatever the fuck. But that's, that's all Vir that's what Virgil gets. He shows up, he hates realians, he likes people, and then he gets shot. Yeah, so in the anime, they made him a main character, and he makes it all the way to the climax. Yeah. That's not a joke either. Like, he may... Again, you might be like, oh, spoilers, he dies. Yeah, in the game, he dies in, like, the first act, like, right near the start, no, he, so... No, not climax. It was, like, episode 10. Yeah, that's what and I meant. Like, he, he makes it to like near getting, the end. And he dies, like, getting shot by Cosmos. And she owns has that has the whole like. Even though in this game, in the anime sense, it doesn't make as much sense because at this point, Cosmos should be more developed as a character. And under and everything, I, I don't know. Yeah, like yeah. Also, it's, it's kind of so weird they extended so weird. his screen time so much, yet they didn't delve into his backstory at all in the anime. How the hell no. do you do that? The only thing he got it all. The only. Whatever, he got a character plot lead. thread. We can't say without spoilers, but the point is, he's voiced yeah, by Andrew yeah. Love, Chiaki from Ahiro no Sora, and Nagisa's his dad from Clanid. And he's fine as Virgil, but it's just so bizarre that they gave this dude of all characters so much screen time, and they like they could have made it where oh maybe we could warm up to him now. They didn't do anything with him. No. Yeah. Again, he participates Mark, in some of the fights, but there it's... was like, and the, there was like one scene where he looked at looked at your wife looked at your wife and reminded him of of someone he used to know that we don't we don't know who that is, but he reminds him of somebody. That's that's all we get for Virgil. Whatever, fuck you, Virgil. Get out of here. Dante was better than you anyway. <laughs> okay, moving on. Next, we have Ziggurat 8. Right after Metropolis, we're talking about the Ziggurat again. <laughs> Whatever, everyone calls him Ziggy. And he's a cyborg that when he first shows up, the dumbasses in the dub call him an android. Those are two completely different things in this universe. Good job, guys. We bring also bring that up because five minutes later, someone else... They call him a cyborg, a cyborg. and correct themselves. 
Yeah. It's stupid. Well, he's your typical military man. You all know what to expect. He's played by Jason Douglas, who's Beerus and Bondo from Elfin Lead. But unfortunately, we don't get Ziggy saying fuck every other word. No, he's very no, he's very uh, stoic and no nonsense. Which Jason Douglas is good at playing those types of characters. He was Richard Epcar in the games, but again, ADV budget. So I think Jason yeah. Douglas does an okay job. After him, though, we have the toaster lolly Realian Momo, who he rescued. Which the pacing of this was done so awkwardly in the anime. Yeah, like. So he yeah. just shows up randomly with Momo, says, I rescued her. And then the start of the next episode is a flashback of him rescuing her. It's so bizarre. A five, it's like a five minute flashback. It was like, it was like, hey, are you Momo? Talking to people like, go rescue Momo. And then two minutes later, are you Momo? Cool. And then like a scene of him clashing with the, with the bad guy dude that we'll talk about in a sec, I guess. Yeah. Well, Momo is typical cutesy moe toaster blob. So, of course, it's ADV slash Sentai. You know, they become Sentai. So she's played by Brittany Karbowski, because who else to play lollies are cute characters? Wendy from Fairy Tail or Rimuru from Slime? I mean, there's a other person. I know, we'll get to her later. Still got a bit to go uh, through first. Uh, no, I mean, I mean, you said who else do, will we get to play a Moe Blob? And it's like, well... Yeah, so... I'm going to be honest. Uh, this is definitely one of Brittany's first roles, or at least earliest roles. You can tell, because she's doing a completely different voice here. You, she's still getting into the groove of figuring out where to find her footing as a voice actor. Not bad, but yeah. just different to where I almost didn't even recognize it was her at first. I definitely didn't. <clears throat> well, whatever. The point is, she played Momo, she did okay at it, because Brittany Karbowski is known for bringing the Lollicon's dreams to life. Shut up, Nomi. I didn't <laughs> say anything. Leave Momo alone. Momo's your friend. He is my friend. Besides, yeah, magical girl transformation that one time, you were very happy. Magical girls are awesome. Anyway, we got the next ship to move on to now, the Elsa. <laughs> Which I'm surprised wasn't the Urza or something in a different language, because those pesky elves in ours. Yeah. Well, first we have its captain, Captain Matthews. Voiced by Stephen Finley, who's Taro from Gate and First Lord for Princess Principal. Why did he give him a Brooklyn accent here? That was literally our question. We don't know. And as, and as you pointed out, and sometimes his accent was like almost non-existent, and then it came back like two scenes later. So. This is on directing, clearly. He's not bad at the yeah. character. He comes across like a stern captain who's like, Oh, no one's fucking with my oh, no, ship. He, oh, no, he was, de he was definitely in line from Matthew from the game. Yeah, so... The accent was just weird. Well, next we have his two subordinates. First, we have Hammer, voiced by Josh Greeley, Mal from Devil is a Part-Timer, and Shido from Data Live. And it's another Josh role. Even back at ADV, when he first started, he was doing the wild, loud squealing and everything and panicking, being a beta male. Yeah, yeah. very, very much Josh, yeah. Yep. So, no complaints. No, no, it's another Josh role. Man. You all know what to expect. He's Josh. He navigates the ship. That's There's not really much more to hammer. He's a my. The two subordinates are kind of minor characters. Yes, but next is my I favorite. Think... My favorite subordinate, Tony. No, he's amazing. Tony is played by Chris Patton, who you don't know is so escaped from Full Metal Panic, or Turl is from Dragon Ball. And he does amazing as his character. Tony is so over the top and insane. He also wants to hit on Shion. Get cucked, Alan. I mean, yeah, literally the first scene is him just like, so where should we go eat? And she's just like, I'm not. And then he, and then Alan's trying to get in the way and he's just, 
He literally shoves out of the out of the way like, so how about we visit your parents? <laughs> I ship it. I love I love Tony so much. He's he's a, he's amazing. He's a he's very much a, like hotshot pilot. Yep. The last member of the crew is Chaos, voiced by Clint Bickham. Iki from Chivalry of a Failed Knight, speaking of fucking, uh, and Akihito mm. from Beyond the Boundary. Chaos, I couldn't tell you much about it all in this anime. Again, the, again, about you got about as much as the game gave you about Chaos. He's just a member of the crew. The anime actually gave you more just because they're, they 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 basically established a connection to him and another character that you see in the second game we so we're like oh maybe they were advertising some stuff about this but yeah the anime gave us more about chaos than the game did which is, feels kind of weird well that's the end of that crew thankfully we only have one major ship to go over the durandal do you guys see what we mean yet with how many characters there are, how they cram this on to 12 episodes? Because we're not done yet. I so the, you're wrong because you could say the bad guys are true. They are, but there's only a couple of them we have to go over. Not as many. Yeah. Well, the leader of the Durandal is named Junior, who's an ageless Shoda person. His backstory is really complicated. Uh, he, he's a he's a realian, but he he doesn't get older. So, yeah. There's a reason. There's well, a reason. Junior is voiced by Greg Aris, Monokuma from the Danganronpa anime. The inferior voice of Monokuma, I don't care what any of you say. <laughs> and Negi from Negima. That show needs yeah. a remake. Give it a remake that already, damn it. That definitely Oh yeah, no, that that definitely explains it because the very first moment you heard him speak, I'm like, I I've heard this voice. Where have I heard this voice? I don't know why they keep making Greg voice Shota's, but yeah, this is another example of it. Yeah. Whatever. He does okay, I guess. Some of his moments where he has to scream on top of his lungs, you could tell he's all in for. So there's that. Mm. Really, Junior's a good boy. His two subordinates I'm quickly going to run through, both Mary and Shelly. Shelly having a southern accent, which according to you is even in the game. Yeah, no, no, no. I don't know, still don't know why, but yeah. Both of them are voiced by Jessica Boone, Kotoha from Best Student Council, and Yuri from Demon King Daimao, the anime that's finally getting another release from Sentai after being out of print for a decade. Don't ask. I remember that one. I do too. I remember liking it, but I haven't seen it in 10 years, so I don't know. I could be retarded and just remembering wrong. But yeah, yeah so uh, not much to say on our performance. These characters barely talk. I just wanted to bring it up because of the silly southern accent, so that was funny. I mean, the southern girl talks more than the other one. Yeah. Okay. Now for the bad guys. Fortunately, there's only two we really need to go over. So first, Kirsch Vajer, who's a Type 99 Realian. Yeah, I'm almost a Type 100. So, this is her predecessor, I guess. Another Lolly yeah. Toaster. And apparently the pseudo-exclusive character for the anime to get you invested, I guess, if you're a gamer. Yeah, there were Type 99 Realians in the game, but not this personality. So... Yeah, kind of... Because I actually kind of like not to derail, Go on. but in the no, I'm just, like in the games, like all this, like the gnosis just appear and it's like why, and in the anime they're like no, Kirishwasa was here. She was pretending to be a hundred series. She was actually like drawing the gnosis to the ship <coughs> because they the Waglinde had one of the Zohar emulators things, but it's like. We gave a reason for this happening. Those disappeared. You you fucked. Sorry about that. Yeah, so it at least does that. Meaning someone on the anime staff had to care, I guess. Yeah. I well, because like, Kiris Vosser like, is a... What's up? No, I was just saying, like, like I like the stuff with Kiris Vosser. Well, she's voiced by Hilary Hag, since again, 
Moe Toaster Blob. Louie yeah. Ruka from Don Machi, best girl, fight me. And Patty Wolf from the DMC anime, because again, the ADV have to recycle their entire voice cast for this across all their game anime adaptations they do. Or if you want to bring up the fact that they're that three of them that three that three of the mains of fucking Full Metal Panic are here. Yeah, that's actually yeah. Because we didn't even get to Vic's character yet. <laughs> no. Oh, wait, yeah, so four of the mains, four out of the five. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever. Okay, so she does fine. Again, she's known for voice of characters like this, especially with Kirst Foster as being emo. Hillary Hug does an all right job. After her, though, we have the person she wants to uh, notice her senpai, Albedo, or Albedo, Albedo. They, they constantly say differently throughout this. Just, just call him whatever the fuck you want. It's whatever, I just... Whatever, I play Genshin, so I just call him Albedo. Well, he's our big bad. He's psychotic. He's insane. No, he's just enjoying life. You heard how much he was laughing. <clears throat> he's played by John Gramillion, Steven from Hero Mask Sentai Dub, and Keiichi... From Kaiji Ultimate Survivor. After 15 years, it's getting a dub. Why did it take so long? Because... <laughs> I keep hearing this show is such a fucking great death game anime. Can't wait. Anyway, John Gramelli does fucking great as this, as Albedo. He hams it up so much. He does a lot, a lot of laughing. Although I couldn't help but think some of his laughing almost sounded like the tightest laugh at some point. Yeah, you brought that up during while we were watching. <laughs> so yeah, he does great. When he's hamming it up near the end also, it just goes full ape shit. Now, oh. last couple characters I'll go over because one of them had a hilarious fuck up. This is Wilhelm, who is a CEO of a company or some shit. CEO? Yeah, he's the CEO of Vector, which is who... That's who, that's who Shion works for. They're all like R&D and development and shit. Well, he's Vic Mignotta, so you know he's cool, even though he's only in, like, two scenes. Because, uh, yeah. And then there's Nephilim. Nephilim being a kind of expository character going on about delusions and shit. Which... She's, she's played by Carrie Savage, who's Remy from Chaos Head, who goes on about delusions and shit. I, I just, I don't even understand... She's also Celica and Blaze Blue, a series that also covers the topic of pseudo delusions and shit at times. <laughs> but I brought her up because she had one of the most hilarious fuck ups and saying that you need to retrieve your memories. She said mammaries and she said it to Shion. So Shion needs to get her titties back, I guess. Yeah, and no, I, we went, I, I went back and after you said that. And she says mammaries 100%. <laughs> that is amazing to me. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah, there's, 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 there are a couple other people, but... There's way too they, many. I mean, the they uh, Junior's know. dad or whatever, the head of the Kukai place, whatever, is also played by John yeah. Gramillion. Yeah, Guinan, it's, what, it's whatever. It's, mm. John Swayze voices just, a bunch of people, too. Yeah, there's lots of double casting from bad voices. Yeah. Whatever. We, there's too many characters in this 12-episode anime. Jesus. How did no one look at this and think, yeah, maybe, guys, we're cramming it a bit much? No. One person, one person did, and then everyone's just like, shut up, we're already seven episodes in. Yeah, and you could tell there's fuck-ups, so, uh... At the end, the final thing that uh, Alberto's going for is called the Proto Merkava. Now, he knows the name of it. Momo knows the name of it. Uh, Kirs Vosser knows the name of it. How does everyone else? Cosmos, yeah. Shion, and all of them know the name of it, even though they weren't in the room at all to hear the name being dropped. They weren't even on the same ship. And for those who know the game, the people that do know about Pro Merkava are like, that should be destroyed. We banished it to the abyss, which they don't really go into 
it doesn't matter, but it's like that shouldn't exist anymore. There's one thing I thought was funny though <laughs> I, that I caught. So yeah. Junior and his past knew Al, um, Alberto when Alberto was really young. Like they they used to yeah, hang out or junior, whatever. Junior, well, no, the no Junior Al, Junior Alberto Guinan, They were all they were all realians and basically all built all the, made for the same purpose. And then they went crazy. Yeah, Junior, though, never aged. Alberto, though, did. He was a Shota in the past. So then we got to the present. Junior hasn't seen him in 14 years. Alberto starts monologuing, and Junior goes, That voice! It can't be! It's Alberto! And it's like, how do you recognize his voice if the last time you heard him speak, he was a Shota who was prepubescent? We saw and the flashback to confirm it was a completely different we, voice actor. We know, we know the voice. I would not connect. I would not connect those two together at all. But like, he, can it's, feel, he can feel Alberto's heartbeat, so he knows. Or whatever. I don't. Yeah, don't this know. is kind of a bit of a plot hole. I don't know if that's in the anime itself or the dub fuck up. But regardless, more, 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 more in the more in the anime. Well. Either way, on its own, how does the anime stand? Not great. There's way too much going on. Like, it's almost impossible to get a grasp on everything happening. And there's better space anime out there you could watch. Yeah. That's yeah. an adaptation. Know me, how does it fare? Would you rather watch this than play the game again? No. No, I'm okay with having seen it the one time because it, it's in, I'm not I'm I'm not seeing I'm not watching it again. There's no. Yeah, not, and if anyone's gonna say, well, game to anime adaptations are always shit. Yeah, tell that to Gungrave, an anime that surpassed the games in popularity back when it aired. Yeah. Then you have Steins Gate, UFO Tables adaptation of Fate Stay Night, the Unlimited Blade Works anime, and Heaven's Feel movies. I know you could say visual novels aren't really of uh, a game, but I don't know. They're still adapting something. And again, Gungrave is still the crowning jewel of this shit. Yeah. Realistically, dude, they, they didn't have to fuck this up. Xenosaga is a massive, expansive universe. Why didn't they just set this anime in a distant planet or some shit and expand the lore farther with some of the side yeah, characters or they, something? They definitely, they definitely could have. It's not like... They, it's not like that hasn't been done for other, uni other universes in the past. Yeah, so... And the problem is, as I said, it doesn't stand on its own because it's adapting part one to a trilogy of games. So when you finish it, you feel like nothing was answered no. because this was no, a only... setup. F1 was meant to set up the universe and get you interested. Yeah, the only thing, two things that the is like it's like you might as well play the game. The only two real things of note that it does not relate to episode one. It gives you a bit about Shion's brother, which is just oh, yeah, he doesn't even show till part two, right? Which is no, he appeared in that one scene in the fur in the first game. Be yeah, but then in the anime, like he shows up in the back half using his ice powers. Yeah, because he's a playable character, so it's like advertisement, whatever. And it, so that's that's still related to the fucking games. So all so the really the only reason to watch this is because of Curse Washer. Yeah, and even then, I think fans of the game might be annoyed at how much they cut out or omitted. And. Uh, Guys, I can say I felt like I was missing huge pieces of information. I mean, you were saying from a game perspective, they cut out the entirety of the cathedral ship because they switched characters around. Yeah, we did because well, well, first we didn't talk about Turing. There's a Commander Turinkoff. He works for a du basically a dude that works with Albedo, Marielus. We two. I always forget it doesn't matter. He does he barely anything in the anime or the or even well the games more so, but Cherenka works for the dude. He so in the 
what's supposed to happen in the Wagdun day, Z Virgil gets shot, Cherenkov escapes with Shion. In the anime, it, Cherenkov gets stabbed by Gnosis, dies, Virgil escapes. And the, the whole deal is, the cathedral ship is a whole dungeon. They cut that out because Cherenkov's supposed to turn into a Gnosis. So, not anymore, he's not. No reason for no reason for that. He's fucking dead. Yep. There's a there's another dungeon they cut out. Oh uh, yeah. The way, point is they cut out a lot of shit. I don't. <laughs> just just, just play don't. the games, guys. Which unfortunately, scam co over there. Like, no, we don't we don't want it because public perception is uh they might not be interested. Couldn't these assholes market it as like done by the creators of Xenoblade Chronicles or something? Yeah, it's... And basically, it's like, if you want to see what they did before, it would work, too. Talking, there's even articles talking about, like, cer um, certain MacGuffins-type things in Xenoblade Chronicles are basically... are just that universe's version of the Zohar. They're basically the same thing. So there's a connection. People know. Well... I'm, it's all so stupid. TLDR, was this anime god-awful? Not really, it's just painfully mediocre. It's one mm. of those anime you'll watch, probably forget all about it when you're done. Especially because they try throwing so much shit out of you at once, it's gonna be hard mm. to retain information anyways. Yeah, and I'm only, I'm gonna remember the memory, just because that was a hilarious fuck-up. Memories, like yep. Yep, Everything I'm gonna remember that just... too. <laughs> hey, I, no, I'm me. Not gonna remember it. Yeah. Imagine if Axel said this, got it memorized. <laughs> <laughs> Be a whole new different scenes in Kingdom Hearts, wouldn't it? Yeah, it would. <laughs> but alright. The MVP of the dub for me is Lucy Christian as Cosmos. I think John Grimoire did okay as Alberto too. Dub well, isn't I mean, god awful. It's your typical ADV dub. It felt rushed at places though, because ADV were kind of dying. I laughed at one of the episode previews saying tune in for the next volume in store soon. It's like, well, that's yeah. dated as fuck. Listen, listen, guys. It's it's about double the length, but on YouTube you can look up Xenosaga episode one cutscenes. There's like a seven hour video just all the cutscenes in the game. It'll probably do better than the anime did. Well, I'm pretty sure it would since it is nearly double the length. <laughs> yeah. Or you could just play the games. Pretty sure they're easy enough to emulate. Yeah. Since Scamcore aren't going to do anything about it. In the meantime, this anime, as I said, is out of print. So if you want to check it out, it's on YouTube. Wouldn't recommend, though, honestly. Even for... I'd say even for the most hardcore of fans, you could just look up the thing with Kyrus Foss. Or... Yeah, I, I, I think I think being more of a hardcore fan would make you more pissed off. Yeah. I don't know. As me who knows nothing, it's just this anime was just painfully mediocre. But that's it. We covered an irrelevant game to anime adaptation that no one probably remembers and brought it back to the surface, so no one will remember this either in a week or two. So what you're, so what you're saying is the next video game to anime adaptation needs to be relevant. Yes. Happy 20 years of Xenosaga, everyone! And remember, this anime existed. Because Scamco yeah, forgot Kobe about the Scamco. series. Yeah. <sighs> and I guess that's it. But I do have one thing to tell you, Nomi. Momo's a better toaster than Cosmos. Fight me. I, um, I'm gonna lose. Whatever. You have fun with Cosmos' stomach cannon vagina thing. <laughs> you confuse so many people with that one. <laughs> Play the games or they'll find out. <laughs> I mean, the anime makes me want to look into the games now because I want to find out what I was missing. But jeez, man. 
But all right, guys. Thanks again for watching. Hope you stuck around this whole time. Let us know what you all thought. Maybe you actually like this anime. If you did, please let, let us know why. Let us know why we're wrong and I everything. I, I, would, I would love to hear your reasoning. Also, who's best toaster? Settle the debate once and for all. Unless you're into Shion. They're all going to say Care Swasser. Why? Because you said Momo is best toaster. Oh, uh, how do you know they're not going to say Ziggy? Ah, because see? He's a cyborg. He's a cyborg. Yeah, that's I mean, the anime called him an android, so it's, you know, it's fine. <laughs> all right, we're trying to sell it long enough. But all right, guys, for real Z, thanks good for watching. We'll be back sometime with something soon. And maybe next time, Nomi, we'll find something that's good. See, we're going up in quality. I can't wait until we go so high that we start rebounding back to shit. You want to rewatch Gilgamesh with me? I have to prepare the shanking knife. All right, on that note, uh, I got to get out of here. Hide from Nomi. So, uh, yeah, guys, have a nice day. Thanks again for watching. Until next time. Bye!